Uh, my experience at the Maui Film Festival has been very pleasant. My experience on Maui has been very pleasant. Um, it, it's uh, a very warm and quite casual and inviting festival. I went to the opening night film, The Supermensch, and it was so nice to be in Under the Stars, you know, and watch this film with about almost 200 people. Um, it's a lovely way to experience cinema. I've gone on some adventures here in Maui. I rented a jeep and drove down to Hana and uh, stopped along the way and had fresh coconut water and um, lychee and, and um, went to the Twin Falls and, you know, uh, treaded that terrain. And I went to Hale Haleakala, and that's how you say it. Um, <laughs> or something and um, I saw the bamboo forest there and, and saw the waterfall as well so it's been a really lovely I love nature and it's lovely to, to be in a place that has so many wonders of nature I've learned mahalo uh, I've learned aloha although I've known aloha but I've never actually used aloha so I've had the opportunity to say aloha and not seem like a crazy person after Maui, you know, I'm, I'm going to a galaxy far, far away very soon. Uh, Star Wars, if that didn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on Star Wars. I'm very excited about that. And um, I also acquired the rights to the book Americana uh, by Chimamanda Gozi Adichie. And so I will be co-producing and starring in the film in the future. So there's a lot of work to do there to get um, a script and, and, and get it made, you know, and that's very exciting. And I'm also uh, cast in The Jungle Book, so I have a very, very busy uh, few months ahead of me. Yeah, I can tell you that I'm going to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Yeah, I went up to the volcano actually, and I thought that would be a perfect place to shoot Star of course, Wars. Yeah. We need to get JJ on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> you were born in Mexico City. I was. And your family moved to Kenya? Yes, my family is Kenyan, and my father was teaching at the university there, at El Colegio de Mexico. And uh, I was born in his last year there, and then we moved back. We, we had a short stint in New York and then moved back to Kenya before I, I mean, shortly after I turned one. Well, I'll be very honest and admit that I only watched 12 Years a Slave twice. Okay. I yeah. watched it once on my own in, at, the, uh, at Fox in, in New York with my best friend and my uh, agent and manager. And then the second time I watched it was at the first public screening, which was at Telluride. Telluride, yes. And um, I f it was important to watch it then because it was the first time that the cast was together. And, you know, just to have that, it, and, and, and Steve, and just to have that um, communal experience, you know, that intimate experience mm -hmm. with our first audience meant a lot to all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, that was phenomenal, and I'm so glad I did it uh, because to feel the air change in the room and to feel everyone go on the same journey I'd gone on, um, in in a private screening, and uh, you know, and just have all the whole audience mm -hmm. taking in this one story was very very powerful. Yeah. And then after that, I didn't watch it. <laughs> and of the program, they said in our first year, they said, "We want your journey in the school to be t to come from a place of unconscious incompetence." move to a place of conscious incompetence and then to a place of conscious competence and finally to a place of unconscious competence. Wow, I love and it. I wanna, <laughs> is somebody taking notes because I want to write this? <laughs> it's my new mantra. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's very good. You know. very good.
There's Joe and Nick Manganello, director and producers of La Bear. Script for, for Magic Mike, I, I, you know, my agents called me and said, hey, you're getting this script, it's about male strippers. And I went, what, what are you, get out of your mind? I go, no, what are you, show girls with guys? I go, get out of here, this is like insane. And they, I go, who's directing? I go, Steven Soderbergh. And I went, ah, man, you know, I gotta do this. And, uh, you know, but I, I had all of these ideas about it. You know, I, I had a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, who I remembered had mentioned that he was a male stripper in the 90s. And I like never asked him anything about it. Like I just didn't want to know what was behind door number two. Like I don't, I don't want to know. I, I, I just, I don't know what that means. You know, I, I thought I funded this movie on, on the equivalent of running up a credit card. I mean, I was, you know, I made a couple of personal appearances at a, at a McDonald's chicken wing event in New York City. <laughs> I was doing a play at Yale. I was doing a streetcar at Yale, and I'd sneak out on the weekends to make personal appearances. I went to a run, an Adidas runway show. I went to a McDonald's chicken wing event. And then that woman who swam from Cuba, Diana Nyat, so she was doing a Duracell event. And I said, how much, you know, will you give me if I show up? And so I showed up there, and I took that money, and that's basically what I used to pay for the film. You know, so, you know, Great stuff that story. somebody, <laughs> stuff that somebody would point a finger and go, you sell out, you're at the chicken wing event, like that's such a sell out move, dude. you know, and I go, well, money isn't evil if you do something great with it. And we, I took that, you know, sell out money and, and we made, you know, we funded an independent feature documentary. 